Hello everybody, I'm Falk and today I'm here to finally make a more extensive explanation of the Weapon Master Gauntlets. So, first of all, the things you already know is this is a five finger glove with full mobility. You can see I can touch every finger and do basically whatever I want. And what you don't actually know is how the protection is made inside. You already know that's viscoelastic foams and composites, but I'm going to go a little more in detail today. The design was uh, originated by a Visby model glove, which is a glove made of leather and a few plates of metal. In this case, the metal was replaced with a very light and strong composite made of the new uh, hybrid fabric made by DSM Dyneema called Dyneema Carbon. This one. So this is a layer of composite. It's not exactly the same that's into the gloves, but it gives you an idea. Okay, this is just three layers of fabric and the resin. It's pretty tough, but flexible. You can't crack it unless you really exaggerate. The one that's into the fingers is even more durable. So uh, I was able to overcome the tendency of composites to shattering. These are the inner plates. So there's one on the fingertip that protects also the front of it. There's one on the middle phalanx and one on the first phalanx of every finger. So three plates per finger, except for obviously the pinky, which, which only has two because it's so small. These are the inner plates, as I said, and they have gaps, obviously, but these were solved by the outer plates, which are the ones into the red patches. These patches are going to be red, white or yellow, depending on the color you choose. As of the rest of the external materials, this is a high quality anti-scratch and anti repleter which is backed by polyester to further increase its resistance to ripping. The palm side of the glove is made of 800 Newton Dyneema based fabric, certified 800 Newton fabric for fencing, and it's going to be actually black, even though this one is white for showing the difference between the parts. So as you can see, you have protection against penetration between the fingers and on the palm. Another feature of the palm is a grip. Even though you cannot see it, there's a silicone based grip on, uh, on the palm side of the gloves. So you can have a good grip without being too much grippy, which you know doesn't allow you to manipulate the sword correctly sword or any other kind of weapon, obviously. As of the fingertips, I don't know if you can see it, but here is my fingertip. So there's room enough in the tip for padding. So this is actually padded on the tip behind the hard parts. When I say hard, I actually mean semi-hard. And here's an example of one of the plates that's going to be inside the gloves. You can see I can squeeze it if I try, but it's actually pretty rigid and it's not going to bend the other direction. So it's not going to bend in this direction while it can bend laterally. And this was achieved by months of work, so I'm quite proud of it. But they said, um, I was saying, the back of the hand is going to be protected by viscoelastic foam, which is pretty tough, but actually flexible. You can see, I can flex it quite well. So it doesn't give any problem with mobility and it can fit a jacket if you need, if it has very long sleeves or the like. But it also has a few plates, you can see there's some plating that allow you to be better protected than just foam. 
The intersections between the plates are protected by the outer pockets with the extra protectors, which I cannot disclose about, sorry. And the thumb. Many have been curious about the thumb. So, if I keep my hand still so you can see the thumb moving, this is the range of motion of the thumb. So, actually quite much. And it has an overlap here so that the, uh, the plate of the back of the hand overlaps with the first thumb plate. And there's a second plate to allow for mobility, for flexibility of the whole thumb. The fingertip is protected. You can see my fingertip here in this position, while here is a thumb fingertip with a protector. Okay. So this in general is an expert fencer's glove. So yeah, it's very protective. You're not going to break anything in this if I did it right. Uh, but it's a kind of glove that probably experienced fencers will prefer, both because of its cost, which is a little bit uh, of an entry level problem. I mean, if you have to fully gear up, maybe you don't want to spend over 2,200 euros in a glove, in a pair of gloves. But if you're an experienced fencer, maybe you'd like to have this kind of mobility. As of comparisons, you can see, yeah, it's thicker. In some points, it's quite thicker than my fingers. But that's for protection's sake. This glove is actually stretchable. You can see, I can squeeze it. So actually, this is the glove's dimensions, but if your hand is smaller, you can just squeeze it with the other hand. It's going to fit everywhere. I've been fitting this glove and also the precedent model, the, f the precedent iteration, which is this one. As you see, it's a little bigger, into a reproduction of a historical side sword, which is in the Museum of Bologna. So it's actually, very small, even though I don't know how, actually if you can see it from the video. There's protection on the sides of every finger. There's protection here. I don't know if you can hear the sound. There's protection on the sides of the thumb, both. There's protection here. Here is the limit of the protection, so the side of your thumb is going to be protected. There's protection here up to this position, while well, there's a small gap here to fit for the sword. So you are protected on the pinky side of the, of the hand. The side of the pinky itself is protected. And also between every other fingers, there's protection. So going back to the wrist, there's going to be a wristband, which is still Proprietary, I cannot disclose exactly how it's made, but you can see it's quite flexible and it flexes decently in the other direction too. It's going to be attached in this position, so you can wrap it around and decide the tightness. And on its back you will have the cuff. The short cuff is going to be just this size, basically, so just avoiding any blade going into your jacket, while the long cuff is going to come up to the elbow and it's going to overlap to it. It's going to be soft, it's in the same material of the armor pads, so it's going to just take on any kind of elbow protection you have and swallow it whole, no problem. And when it comes to padding, I'm using Poronix RD which is probably the best padding in the world today. So, under the plates, there's a layer of pouring XRD, this one. Speaking of durability and sensitivity, well, many people have been complaining that they can't grab a feather from the ground or the like. So you can see this is flat, and I can take up a 3mm piece of pouring XRD. I could actually grab a pencil or a pen, anything. So, 
you can probably say goodbye to the problem of taking your weapon off the ground, but this is a, a minor point in my opinion. So thanks for watching and there will be more updates in the near future, but I can't disclose more right now. So thanks for being here and thanks for the support.